In terms of DAO specifically, um, there certainly isn't a proposal that's live on the table in New Zealand for, say, legislation to allow DAOs to be incorporated or have legal um, uh, or liability protection for members. Um, there are some things which have been done internationally, particularly places like Wyoming have legislation that allow incorporation as a sort of a, a, a limited liability entity as a DAO. Uh, it's fair to say that that issue is coming under more direct scrutiny now. And the issue is that with one of these decentralized um, organizations, there is a risk that if it does not fit clearly into one of the legal recognized categories, such as a company, that under most common law jurisdictions like ours, like the US, that they will simply be treated as a partnership, i.e. a group of people who have aligned themselves together for a common goal. And that's actually not a great outcome because under a partnership, as any partner in a law firm like myself will tell you, uh, there is joint and several liability for the acts of any partner under the partnership. Uh, and that's a pretty scary outcome for people just wanting to join a group or a DAO. And we've seen that in the US in recent uh, weeks to months with Uki DAO, where the CFTC has brought uh, the commodities regulator has brought an action against a DAO where they allege that there is some fraudulent activity going on. And they've actually brought that against all of the members of the DAO who have voted on recent proposals. Now, I see some head shaking. It is, quite frankly, crazy and has come under a lot of um, criticism, but it is the legal result that many lawyers were worried about and had warned about. Um, as to where that goes, we don't know, but it's clearly a case of regulators flexing their muscles to try and sort of push people towards um, really thinking about these issues and not just assuming that no one will take these legal points. 